Assalamu alaikum. This is Dr. Hasna with Hasna Snap Me. Today we're going to continue the discussion of the inguinal canal. So today I'm going to tell you about the mechanism of the inguinal canal and its coverings of the contents it carries. So before I get started with the video, most of the people that watch my videos are actually non-subscribers. So guys, I request you all to click that subscribe button and turn your post notifications on. So once again, let me give you a brief revision. The inguinal canal was an oblique intermuscular passage located on the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall running from the deep to the superficial inguinal ring running inframedially just above the inguinal ligament. Content of the inguinal canal was the spermatic cord in males while the round ligament in females. That day I explained to you the concept that the fascia transfer cellus is where the deep inguinal ring was located and coming from deep to superficial the next layer we had transverse subdominus then the internal oblique then the external oblique superficial inguinal ring was located in the external oblique and that way your structures would pass through this canal all right so i would like to give you all a visual representation of what is actually occurring so guys going from deep to superficial let's suppose this is the extra peritoneal fat and the peritoneum uh, on top of that we had the fascia transfer salis all right and the deep inguinal ring was an opening in the fascia transfer salis as you can see here as we go more superficial, the next muscle we encounter is the transversus abdominis muscle right here. All right. And then more superficial to the transverse abdominis was the internal oblique muscle. And finally, we had the external oblique muscle with, as you can see here, the superficial inguinal ring. All right. This is how the structures were kept. Here's a ring. The ring which is located right here deep inguinal ring in the fascia transverse salus what happens is it's not just a flat passage rather it's an oblique intermuscular passage so anything that's passing through this canal comes from the deep inguinal ring and goes all the way to the superficial inguinal ring and now you're probably thinking how is that possible because my finger is unable to get to the superficial inguinal ring Therefore, the structures of the inguinal canal actually have various coverings derived from these muscle layers. Obviously, if you have to reach in order to reach this, you have to fold all of these layers and take the layers. As you can see, you have to take all of these layers in order to be able to enter the superficial inguinal ring. As the contents of the inguinal canal traverse through the canal, they take with them the coverings of that anterior abdominal wall, all right, in the form of their fascias. So the first covering that is acquired is from the fascia transversalis. This covering is known as the internal spermatic fascia. This is basically the derivation from the fascia transverse salis. What are the next structures we will encounter in order to be able to traverse this canal? Transversus abdominis and the internal oblique. Therefore, these will also come along and they will form the intermediate covering. Suppose this is the content, cross section of the content of the inguinal canal. First covering or the most internal covering is the internal spermatic fascia derived from the fascia transverse salis. And then as it traverses further, the to the transversus abdominis and the internal oblique give it the intermediate covering. This is known as the cremasteric fascia. So as we studied before, cremasteric fascia consists of the cremasteric muscle embedded in this fascia with a connective tissue. The next layer that is acquired around this content would be from the external oblique aponeurosis obviously because from from here onward it goes down into the scrotum so it has to acquire the layer of external oblique aponeurosis and this is known as the outermost covering this is called the external spermatic fascia and after the external spermatic fascia is your skin so suppose this is the content of the inguinal canal. It is covered by the internal spermatic fascia first, derived from the fascia transverse salis, the innermost layer, obviously. When it reaches the transverse abdominis and the internal oblique, it acquires these cremasteric fascia with the cremaster muscle embedded in it. And finally, when it reaches the external oblique epineurosis too, it acquires the external spermatic fascia, the outermost covering of the content. 
All right, so I hope that is clear. Now I'm going to talk about the mechanism of the inguinal canal. What is the mechanism of an inguinal canal? Well, basically, the inguinal canal is the site of the anterior abdomen in the lower part of weakness. It is a site where hernias can occur because basically you're saying there are openings in the abdominal wall. Therefore, any content from the abdomen can, through those openings, reach other regions. Hence, it is the inguinal canal is a region of weakness. However, there are a couple of mechanisms that are occurring in the inguinal canal that protect it from that weakness or basically strengthen the inguinal canal. So there are four formal mechanisms while three other mechanisms that the inguinal canal is protected from this weakness. Let's go ahead and talk about these. The first mechanism is known as the flap valve mechanism. The flap valve mechanism is the fact that the inguinal canal is an oblique passageway. Inguinal rings are not completely approximated over each other. Rather, they are, one is lateral, one is medial. So they are away from each other. Therefore, when the intra-abdominal pressure is raised due to sneezing, cough, suppose this is the canal. When the intra-abdominal pressure is raised, the anterior wall and the posterior wall of the canal will approximate and since these two openings are away from each other you can see the openings are completely closed nothing can creep out of this place all right i hope that makes sense so this is known as the flap valve mechanism the fact that the inguinal canal is oblique and the two openings the deep inguinal ring and superficial inguinal ring they are not lying completely opposite to each other the next mechanism is known as the shutter mechanism. In the shutter mechanism, there is great involvement of the internal oblique. If we go back and recap the boundaries of the inguinal canal, we'll remember that the internal oblique played a role in forming the anterior wall of the inguinal canal. And then it also formed the roof of the inguinal canal by the arching fibers and via its conjoint tendon, it also formed the posterior wall of the inguinal canal. As you can see, the in internal oblique, it has a triple relation with the canal. It is forming three boundaries of the inguinal canal. Therefore, when intra-abdominal pressure is raised, the internal oblique contracts, the roof is approximated with the floor of the inguinal canal. Therefore, the openings can easily be closed. And transversus abdominis also aids in this mechanism. Third mechanism is known as the ball valve mechanism. Now this is simple because we've studied the cremaster muscle. We remember that the cremaster muscle would basically uh, contract to close the superficial inguinal ring. As you remember, the cremaster muscle uh, had superficial loops and deep loops. The deep loops were close to the superficial inguinal ring. Therefore, the superficial inguinal ring would be closed whenever there was a contraction of the cremaster muscle. The next mechanism is known as the slit valve mechanism. Superficial inguinal ring, if you all remember, was triangular in shape. It had two cruda, the lateral crust and the medial crust. Since the superficial inguinal ring lies external oblique aponeurosis, when intra-abdominal pressure is raised, the external oblique contracts and these two crura, they approximate to close the superficial inguinal ring, therefore forming slit. So this is the slit valve mechanism. The Three other ways in which the inguinal canal is protected from the weakness are the fact that the deep inguinal ring was, if you remember, covered by the internal oblique fibers. So whenever internal oblique contracts, it covers up the deep inguinal ring. As you can see here, this is the deep inguinal ring. This is the internal oblique lying right in front of it. Normally the canal is open, but when internal oblique is contracting, it, it shuts off this deep inguinal ring, all right? The next important factor is that the superficial inguinal ring, if you remember, posterior to the superficial inguinal ring was the conjoint tendon and the reflected part of the inguinal ligament. If you remember the posterior wall of the inguinal canal, those two are responsible for closing up the superficial inguinal ring from the back. The superficial inguinal ring is guarded from the back by conjoint tendon and the reflected part of the inguinal ligament. Finally, the last mechanism are the hormones. The hormones are responsible for maintaining the tone of the inguinal musculature. Therefore, the inguinal canal remains strong in normal individuals. However, if any of these factors fails, 
or if there's any kind of any weakness in the wall, it can result in what? The inguinal hernia. And that is the topic for our next video. So I really hope you understood today's lecture. Join me in the next video where I will explain and make the concept of inguinal hernias extremely simplified. If you want me to keep coming up with more videos of simplified versions of anatomy topics, do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Leave a like and a comment. Thank you so much for watching.